guys, my name is Luke and welcome back to another tutorial. I am very sorry for taking like what a two months hiatus. Uh, yeah, just being busy with work and haven't really had motivation, but I'm back at it again. And yeah, so let's do some cool shit together. So yeah, today's tutorial, we're gonna be doing a kind of like a universe being born. At least that was the initial idea when first coming up with this concept. So yeah, it's, it's actually a pretty simple uh, concept, but yeah, let's jump straight into it. Cool, so let's start with a XP system over here. We're gonna change this from a rectangle over here to a sphere. I'm gonna set the radius to about one centimeter. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be quite small. That's chilled. And then let's increase our timeline to about 500. So over here at one, we want to Put a keyframe over here then maybe at about maybe 180 let's set this to about 12 10 it's all up to you uh so yeah and then let's go over here to emission and we're gonna go from rate to pulse let's just increase the birth rate by a bit and then turn off the speed so now if we press play it should just kind of increase like that cool cool so now the fun stuff begins Let's go over here and we're gonna need three effectors. We're gonna need a XP attract and XP rotate. Where is rotate? XP rotator. Let's just make sure that this is facing the right direction. Let's just rotate it upwards. Make sure that's 90 degrees over here. And then finally, let's add a XP turbulence. Let's just start with the rotator over here. We're gonna change this type from velocity to force. Um, I'll show you just now why, because I mean like if we had to put this on velocity, it doesn't really make much of a difference. And then we would have to increase like the speed multiplier by a lot. So let's just change it to force. And then you should be getting something like this. Oh yes, before I forget, in the emitter over here, on the emission tab, let's turn off this emit on all frames and say, let's end on frame maybe like 400 and that should be good cool cool now that that rotator is down over here let's add in some turbulence turbulence you can just keep the same type of turbulence that's all up to you i mean a lot of this is you can like change yourself but for the effect that i got this is kind of the settings that i was using and if we press play, we should get this kind of like weird onion ring looking thing. Those kind of look like onion rings. And then let's add in a XP attractor. But for this, let's turn this down by a bit. Uh, how much did I have over here? Maybe like a hundred. And let's see. Yeah, that's actually perfect. And now you guys are seeing like the base of this effect. And that looks pretty cool. Uh, we can turn off these over here just so we don't see it in the viewport. And so now if we press play again, we get this kind of like, if we look at it from another angle, kind of gives you the look of like a, a galaxy in a way, which I thought was pretty cool. And so this next part of here is kind of where, you know, the your just personal creative control can come in and you can kind of change the settings. But the thing that I did with my render, I don't know if you noticed with it, that it kind of was born and then it like went in on itself, came back out, went back in and then exploded. So how I did that was just kind of animating the tractor over here. So let's go to maybe like frame 180 over here, set a keyframe, set another keyframe just directly afterwards, change it to 60. Oh, that was the wrong button. And then let's maybe go to like, that's fine and change this back to 15 and you'll see that when we press play over here now forms the kind of galaxy thing then it comes back in and then comes back out again and it, like is bigger which I just thought was super cool so let's just take this duplicate it again over here just so it, like it does it twice I mean a lot of this you guys can you know, if you want to do it, you can do it. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. It's kind of all up to you. And then over here, like 400, let's set a keyframe over here 
and then let's set it to maybe like yeah let's just just go all out like 300 because we, what we wanted to do over here is i kind of want it to be like a big bang type of thing so i wanted to completely suck in and then explode all the way out so let's take the key from there and then at maybe like here Set another keyframe but let's also set a keyframe for these ones and then let's reverse this all the way increase this by a bit there's no specific numbers that you have to use all of this is just kind of trial and error and let's see what that looks like so it starts out spinning which i still think looks really cool sucks in kind of comes out bigger sucks in again and then finally, all the way in and explode. Nice. That looks cool. So in my original render over here, um, I have some like keyframes for the rotator and the turbulence where I'm kind of changing the turbulence during these little parts where it gets sucked in and kind of increasing the speed of it. So if you want to do that, you can, but I think for this tutorial, I won't do it because a lot of this is just kind of trial and error as you go, just kind of see what works for your specific render. Um, you'll notice over here that in my scene, if you guys want to create like a scene like my scene over here, I have a bunch of spheres that are cloned. So I just have a clone over here with a sphere, with a random effect to just kind of move them all around and change the rotation and the scale of them. And all of these little spheres just have little planet textures. So you can just download some like planet textures online. And then I just kind of scattered that around just to kind of give the feel of, you know, these are planets to kind of show scale because the simulation is like a really small simulation. I did that just to kind of show scale over there. Cool, so let's spice this up a bit. In the emitter over here, let's go into the display and change this to a gradient parameter. I think age should be fine. It might be speed instead, and I think I use this preset over here. Yeah. Look at the variations in the color over there. And I, with, with it like constantly coming in and out, you get the variations in the color because of the fact that it has this sphere. So it looks like we're still emitting over here. I think we can fix that just by changing in the emission over here. Just make me make this like 350. And that should solve that specific problem. So what I did with my initial render was you'll notice over here that because we are having this emitter kind of like going bigger and bigger and it's pulsing every 30 frames, you'll see that like there's a ball every few seconds. So what I did to get past that was I just added a sphere over here and just animated the scale to kind of follow what it's doing so that it doesn't kind of give anything away. Although that might be a little big over here. Yeah, and like, look at that, super cool. Well, at least I think it's cool. Um, yeah, and then for the camera, so uh, to make it a little bit more interesting, because like this is cool and all, but it I don't know, could be cooler. So what I did with the camera was I just created a null. Let's open up our live viewer over here. Let's get a camera. Let's make, make this like a, a 50 mm lens, be fine. Something like that. And all I'm doing throughout this is just kind of animating these. So just do like a full 360 over here. Uh, I guess something like that. And then just going over here, making that linear. So now we get this kind of, I think I made it obviously spin a lot more than that. Maybe it's like, like this 720, 720. Something like this. And that looks pretty cool. Cool, so now how do we render this? So the rendering is pretty much the same whenever you do like rendering X particles inside of Octane. But in case you don't know, I will show you. So let's go over here. 
let's add in a material so diffuse material over here and here in the emitter we're gonna go to c40 octane tags go to the particle rendering set that to geometry and there's a whole bunch of balls over there cool let's add a sphere and then add the sphere in here we're gonna change this to one don't crash please always remember to save which is what I did not do but it's okay I mean it was just a tutorial anyway so it should be fine okay we're back I open up the project again but I don't feel like recreating that entire thing so we're just gonna break down the project that I have actually created and yeah I mean that actually might be better because then you guys can see all the other tips and tricks that I did with it cool let's go out of the camera over here and let's open up our live viewer Okay, so let me go back to that, uh, what I was doing up here. So we've got our particle ring, I mean our octane geometry tag over here, just object tab. And then in the particle rendering, we need to set that geometry. And then we have a sphere over here that sits like quite small. So I see I said it's like 0.3 centimeters. And how we're getting the, the look over here, let me, just let this play for a little bit. So how we're getting that look is, I think it's this material over here. It's pretty simple. It is literally just, oh, well, that's not what I was expecting. That's what I was expecting. That's more like it. Cool, so it is very simple. It's literally just taking over here an instance color, setting that to particle, and then choosing the emitter that you have and setting that over here. So what that's gonna do is that whatever color your particles are inside of X particles over here, that's what color they'll be inside of the renderer. And then all I'm doing is plugging that into a black body texture over here setting it to a quite low and yeah I don't, I don't think you need it in the distribution but i put it in the distribution for some reason and yeah that's how we get the look of that render let me just play this up a little bit more you'll notice that these like other spheres the quote-unquote planets around aren't moving but that's okay because the camera is kind of sweeping around so it gives this effect as if they are moving so inside of here you know, we get this and then we're still able to, let's see. Oh no. Not again. What have I done? While this is frozen, let me break down some other things that I did. For the HDRI over here, I just downloaded this like sky. Um, let me see if I can show you space. And I think it was this the Saturn. Yeah, I think it was this one over here. It's just this HDRI that I found online that I thought was pretty cool and we can't view it because the computer is completely crashed for some reason. Um, but yeah, it's literally just this background up here. And you'll see just by adding these little like spheres that we have around here, it really adds some like depth over there. It makes it that there's a foreground, a middle ground, and a background, which was kind of the point of those. So another thing that you'll notice in the initial render that I did is that we have some smoke. So I'm not gonna show it in this one because I I don't really think it showed much in the render and I don't really kind of 100% like how it looked. But what I did for that was I added another emitter and let me just close this. Octane. Okay. We're back again for the third time. It's a little bit annoying. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but I feel like we got most of the tutorial done in that first like little bit of this. So here's just like extra details. So I feel like that whole beginning part was the main majority of it. So when all this other stuff is messed up, I feel like it's okay. But I do, I do apologize. Um, yeah, so I think I was saying, I was telling you guys how to do like the, the smoke. So 
that was pretty simple. I just had another image over here. It's pretty much exactly a duplicate of the previous one, but instead it has red over here and it's, is it this one? Yeah, it is this one because it's only birth rate in like three. So if we press play over here, you know that there's, notice that they're just kind of like that. And all of these are still using the exact same modifiers. So all of these up here, so it should stay with it. And what I'm doing with that is, uh, it's actually this one over here, but exactly the same principle where it's just a few more particles and I just added a uh, exposure effects tag onto it and then just put an exposure effects box around it. Uh, I don't think, yeah. You can see over here, there's an exposure effects box around it. And that just kind of created these like smoke trails that you can kind of see in between just to kind of add some thickness because a lot of these were well, from like the pictures that I was looking at, they kind of have clouds in it. I mean, even those clouds made of particles, I thought I would just make actual clouds with it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the breakdown of this project. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Sorry, this tutorial has been a little bit all over the place, but I hope you learned something new. I hope you had fun and enjoyed the journey. Uh, yeah, and as per usual, the project file with all the stuff is on my Patreon if you guys are interested in that. But if not, that's completely chilled. And yeah, I hope you're able to make some really cool renders. And if you do, I'd love to see them, you know? Tag me on Instagram, uh, Motion and Design. And yeah, let me know what you guys think. And if there's other things that you guys want me to do, let me know. I was thinking of doing some more uh, commercial breakdowns, seeing as though I've been doing a few of those recently. Uh, I've done a few commercials recently, so I thought maybe you guys would be interested in like breaking down those. If you are, let me know. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you guys next week.